Hello, friends. Lesson number seven, November 12th, Christ's victory over death. It's the important part of the Christian um, life that Christ died for us, but Christ resurrected. Let's have a word of prayer to start this discussion. Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for us. But thank you more for Jesus being resurrected. And now that he is there in heaven, he is preparing for us to have eternal life. We ask you to increase our faith, to increase our dependence, to increase our communication with uh, Jesus. And then that we one day can be with him forever. Forgive our sins and be with everyone, especially the students in preventive care. Bless us, the families, and bless everyone that is attending these sessions now. In Jesus' name, amen. For this uh, Bible verse here that is um, important for us to to discuss, when I saw him, I fell down at his feet like a dead man. He put his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to death and to the place of the dead. Revelations 1, 17 and 18. This was an experience by John, who wrote the book uh, Revelation. And John was mentioning that um, he, he had this vision that he, he was with Jesus here. And then he, he was able to go to heaven and saw Jesus there. And he was very happy with that. And, and Jesus would say, hey, look at my hands. I was the one that died and I am here. And you read this in your book, and that John wrote in the in the Bible. The death of Jesus at the cross is the basis of our redemption. However, a dead Savior cannot save anyone. Christ is risen. The res resurrection of Jesus marks the final victory over sin and death. It also guarantees our own resurrection. So those are the things that we are going to go over. The topics of our discussion from now on. I tried to make a, another research here to see um, about the accuracy of the Bible, especially the Old Testament. Uh, sorry, the New Testament. So I got this from the internet, and I will show you the reference um, at the end of this uh, description. So there are two, uh, two important books that are um, very accurate, um, and one is the Iliad by Homer, that was written in nine hundred year in the nine hundred year before Christ. And the other was the New Testament that was written uh, about 100 years, up to 100 years uh, after, or Anno Domini, or after Jesus uh, uh, born. So, the first copy uh, of these books, we have the years that was uh, written, 130 AD, and then 400 uh, before Christ was when they made the first copy. And then time of copies uh, since written. Since the first book was written and the copies taken, it took 500 years uh, from the Iliad. And then the book in, uh, in the copies from the time that was written was less than 100 years from the, from the, the, the New Testament. Total copies that we have 
643 copies of the Iliad and 5,600 copies of the New Testament. And all of these copies from the original that were produced, what is the accuracy of them? And so in, in the Iliad, um, in the Iliad, you have 95% accuracy. So it's pretty good for a book. But the, but the one, the Bible in, the, in this case was 99.5% and was a bigger number and much more accurate. Why am I bringing this? I'm going to tell you at the end of this. At the end of these sessions, I'm going to tell you. Let's take a look at the copies of the New Testament. There are thousands more New Testament Greek manuscripts than any other ancient writing. So if you combine, if you are a historian, you will, you will have to agree with this. If you are a historian, those that search history and that say, okay, this is written and this is a document and this is um, a great. You cannot dispute for, with that. The internal consistency of the New Testament, I already mentioned about that, is 99% textually pure. In addition, there are over 19,000 copies of the Syriac, Latin, Coptic, and Aramaic languages. The total supporting New Testament manuscript base is over 24,000 copies ancient copies that uh, that are, are written and they have a 99.5 accuracy, textual accuracy. No Christian reference to Jesus. So I brought this because if you, so let's forget a little bit about the Bible, but let's take a look on what people, historians, um, mention about uh, Jesus Christ. So Tacitus was a Roman historian in the first century uh, Anno Domini after Jesus. Christus, from whom the name had his, its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilatus and a most mischievous superstition thus checked for the moment again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome. And this um, mischievous superstition is Christianity that came after him. That's what Tastus was uh, talking about. Lucian of uh, Samosata, and he lived in the second century. And then he said, the Christians worship a man to this day. And this, the distinguished personage who introduced their noble rites and was crucified on that account. It was impressed on them by their original lawgiver that they are all brothers from the moment that they are converted and deny the gods of Greece and worship the crucified sage and live after his loss. So, in this case, Jesus, I mean, Lucian mentioned that Jesus was crucified. Then we go to Josephus. Josephus was a Jewish historian and lived around the first century AD. His personal name was Jesus. His brother was James, also called Jacob. He won over both Jews and Greeks, largely after his death. Um, so this is talking about converted to Christianity. Most of them were after he died. Jewish leaders of that day expressed unfavorable opinions about him. His execution was spe specifically by crucifixion. So this is what is written about Jesus Christ on that time. Tacitus and Josephus, um, independently, they agree in some points here. 
Pilate rendered the decision that he should be executed. He was executed during Pontius Pilate's governorship over Judea. And both Josephus and Tacitus states, adding that it was during Tiberius' reign that we, we know uh, the name is Tiberius Caesar. Then we have another um, historian, was a Syrian philosopher called Marabar Serapion, Serapion in, in, in lived in the first century also. What benefit did the Athenians obtain by putting Socrates to death? Famine and plague came upon them as judgment for their crime. Or to the people of Samos for burning Pythagoras? In one moment, their country was covered with sand. Or the Jews, by murdering their wise king, after that their kingdom, their kingdom was abolished. God rightly avenged these men. The wise king lived on the teachings he enacted. Anyways, he was referring to, in the first century, to to Jesus Christ. He mentioned about the Greeks and the, that killed their, um, not prophets, but their, their teachings, their teachers, because they came with new ideas and, and, and somehow people didn't accept the ideas and ended up killing the, the, but, well, the wise men. But here they, they talk about the wise king that the Jewish um, rejected. So let's go back to the topic of resurrection, and then at the end I will mention again about um, why did I bring those issues about accuracy and the truth that the Bible was a book that was uh, um, existent. Well, the first thing was that what happened after Jesus died? So they went and made the tomb secure, the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. So first, the, they put a big stone, as you see on the right side here, and sealed that. It was a very heavy thing that uh, people would not be able to take away or to move. So they put this inside of the cave, put that the big stone there, and then um, the, the Jewish leaders said, well, let's, um, let's prevent the disciples from opening it and sealing the body. And that's one thing for us to argue. Um, the disciples were scared. When Jesus was arrested and when Jesus was executed, when Jesus was punished and was uh, tortured, the disciples ran away. They didn't stay uh, around. He, they didn't want to do anything about Jesus Christ. Eh? Even one of them committed suicide was Judas. And Peter uh, denied him three times. And the other disciples, they were hid themselves somewhere in Jerusalem because they were afraid of the Jews. If the Jews were able to kill uh, their master, what they could do to them. And so, would they go to that cemetery, to that tomb full of soldiers and steal the body of Jesus? I don't think so. But we have a mention here by Ellen White in the book Desire of Age, page 782. By the way, I have read I have read this book I am, and I am reading it again. The Desire of Ages is one of the best books that talk about uh, the life and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the benefit of humanity. So if you have the opportunity to read this book, it's going to be good for you. The Desire of Ages by Ellen White. And and I have seen people that I gave one of these books to them. And, and they marvel at it. And they say, well, I never seen something so very well written. So I will, I will allow you, I will ask you to, to read. If you want a copy of this, you tell me 
and I will give you a copy. Uh, I, I promise to you, if you want to read that book, just email me and I will provide you a copy, either, either an electronic or a, um, a, a hard copy. Let's go what, uh, for what uh, she mentioned about, uh, uh, about Jesus. When Jesus was laid in the grave, Satan triumphed. He dared to hope that the Savior would take up his life again. Um, he claimed he claimed the Lord's body and set his guard about the tomb, seeking to hold Christ as a prison. He was bitterly angry when his angels fled at the approach of the heavenly messenger. So here we have Satan angels, angels and we are not talking about those guards because uh, Satan talked that I mean, putting a, a, a big stone and put guards were not enough to block Jesus to come out. But, uh, but uh, he brought his own angels that were surrounded the tomb. And, and, and so see, we have three levels there. We have the big stone that is not easy to move. The soldiers that uh, were there to, to protect anybody to come. And then we have Satan agents and Satan angels there to, to block that nobody could go inside and, and nobody could come from inside. But then an angel of the Lord came. That's the messenger here. And then when he saw Christ come forth in triumph, he knew that his kingdom would have an end and that he must finally die. Died. So, this was fundamental. This was, uh, I think he is still bitter for that. But uh, this was the end for Satan. Satan that is deceiving people, deceiving me, deceiving you every time. Now, he figured out that his kingdom is gone. And the whole universe is seeing what, uh, what Satan was doing. Can you believe all the angels in the universe, all the other beings in the universe looking at what is happening on earth and looking at what was happening on that tomb? And they were kind of not understanding very well why they're creator why jesus christ was inside of a tomb they saw that he died and they saw that what, what was going on and now they saw satan and the angels blocking the entrance or, or the exit of that tomb but they saw also that jesus came out and jesus came out and proclaimed his second coming and proclaim that now salvation is open to all human beings. And Satan was defeated. And Satan and his angels was doomed. They were doomed to eternal destruction. And that's very bad for him. And today he knows that his, his days are counted. And that's why... They, he is trying to convince and to get as much as pe people as possible on his side to die or to be deceived by him. But we have a victory. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. <coughs> So we already talked about that. Um, and then Jesus resurrected and took um, the life he has surrendered back. The elders, then when they saw what happened, they went there and bribed the guards to make the people believe the impossible. The soldiers that... Uh, the soldiers had fallen asleep and that the disciple had removed a strong and noisy stone, taking the body of Jesus with them. 
The only thing that he, they didn't know is that Satan was there with the angels, would not allow anybody to steal the body of Christ. Christ came forth from the tomb, glorified, and the Roman guards beheld him. I think at that time, some of these Roman uh, soldiers, they even became Christians later on. I have some some uh, um, history, mm, traditional history about that. And But after he died, what are the proof that we know that he is um, resurrected? Well... Here in the in Matthew twenty seven fifty two and fifty three, the last part of the verse say, uh, they went in the holy city and appeared to many. So, he appeared to many. Let's see how many. Um, first thing is that the ones that resurrected to with him. So it looks like when he died, the, um, there was an earthquake, and then the tombs were opened. And when Jesus resurrected, some of these guys resurrected together with them. Who would that be? So I made a list here. Who would those be? And then I believe, uh, I put a list here. I don't know. That, uh, the Bible does not say anything, but probably the ones that die under um, martyrdom, that were killed by by their own people, but they, they are killed because they were uh, following Jesus Christ or following God. They were, those are the ones that probably resurrected. And then the first one was Abel. You might say, well, Abel was uh, because of Cain, of Cain. But the problem with, uh, Abel, with Abel and Cain was that Abel was following God, following God's instructions. In fact, he was offering sacrifice, a sacrifice of a lamb that uh, was what uh, he's supposed to do that will point to Jesus. And then Cain was offering God the fruits that uh, was not the... the was not the idea that uh, he he should uh, um, adore God, and then Cain, and God didn't. And in other points, in other types of uh, of religion, um, you, you might you might see that a God will not be pleased with the sacrifice of someone; he would kill that person. But in that case, God didn't do that. I mean, Cain offered something. God simply didn't accept that one. And he told um, Cain, Cain, you have to offer a sacrifice of a lamb that is represents the death of my son for your, uh, for your sake. And... And I don't know, Cain became very upset. And decide to kill Abel. So Abel is the first on the list. Then we have Isaiah that was killed, uh, saw in a half by Manasseh. We have Zechariah that was slain in the temple by Joash. We have Jeremiah that was stoned to death in Egypt by Jews living there. We have Ezekiel that was slain in Chaldea by the chief Jew living there. Habakkuk is stoned to death in Jerusalem by Jews. Amos tortured and killed with a staff by the priests of Bethel, and the last one, uh, Joseph uh, John the Baptist. Well, this is a combination of history, Jewish history, and the Bible. But um, I believe those are the ones um, that were resurrected with Jesus Christ. And then we have those who saw Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. So let's go over the ones that uh, witnessed his resurrection. A group of women first, then the Roman guards, Mary Magdalene, the Emmaus disciples, Peter, those gathered at the upper room, Thomas, Thomas one, uh, see his hands with... Uh, 
with the sign of the, the nails. More than 500 people in 1 Corinthians 15, 6. And James, the brother of Jesus. One more here. Let's see who is this guy here. And Paul. Uh, Paul was not directly seeing that, but uh, he saw him uh, on the... Um, on the way to Damascus when he became uh, blind and then uh, Jesus asked him why he was persecuting him. The importance of the resurrection. If Christ is not risen uh, from the dead, and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. If if he didn't do that, what is um, what is happened to us? If Jesus is not risen, our faith is futile. Since Jesus is risen, what will I have? Our preaching makes sense. We testify that God is truthful. We believe that he will also be resurrected. We believe that we also will be resurrected. We have faith that our sins are forgiven. We will see those who have died again. And we have hope in a better life. Finally, the resurrection of Jesus guarantees that the last enemy, death, will be defeated. Remember, we talk about that, that uh, even though we, we are with the, with the Lord, we have faith in a second life, we don't like to die. We don't like to talk about that. We don't like to go to the cemeteries. We don't like to, to see people dying. And even the word death is, is not good in our years. So now I'll go back um, to what I mentioned before in the beginning. Is there any proof that Christ was resurrected? And then I would say, okay, the Bible is an accurate document. 24,000 copies, 99.5% accuracy. The miracle of the Bible is another thing. This book was written 2,022 years ago. And... Uh, and some of them, some parts of this, even 3,000 years in the time of Moses. The most prominent religion in the world, Christianity, would not be existent if it weren't by the Bible. The uniqueness of the Christian faith, a good, a God who came to die for us and resurrected, went to heaven to prepare a place for us to live eternally. Jesus existed. So another point, Jesus' existence, as we saw by Josephus, Tacitus, and Serapion. And the Bible is an authentic book. We cannot deny that. He claimed to be the Son of God, and he announced his death and resurrection. And we are talking about Jesus Christ. Some people... Um, some religions, they believe that Jesus Christ came to this world, but he was not the son of God. He was just a, um, a wise man that came here, very wise. And, and because he communicated with the Lord, he was, he was uh, able to do all these miracles. But if you check some of the citations given by Jesus, he would say clearly, I am the son of, the, of God. I am the, I am the one that, um, um, that's supposed to come. I am the Messiah. There are some uh, citations about that. So, of course, this is not a proof uh, as you, about resurrection. It's a proof that Jesus was there. Jesus existed, and once Jesus existed, what was saying, what was said about Jesus was all very uh, well um, kept without changing. And this is a, a miracle that you have all of these uh, 
copies of the Old Testament that were completely similar to each other. Then we have the fact that he came, he died for us, he's resurrected for us, and he was saying that uh, one time he would come back to take us to heaven. Uh, and then he mentioned that because of he was able to resurrect because of the power of the Lord. And then now is our turn. When Once Jesus comes, the ones that are alive will go with him to heaven. And the ones that die in Jesus Christ, uh, die doing good things, I mean, going after the right thing, they will live with God forever. Send his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. My Savior lives, because He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I know He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. God sent his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, strengthen in our minds the hope of the resurrection based on the resurrection that Jesus did for us here on earth. We are thankful for Jesus' sacrifice. We are th thankful for his resurrection. And we are looking forward to the second, to his second coming to live to make us to live eternally with him and to have eternal life. We thank you. We ask you this experience to all the students, to all the people that um, watch this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.